Hi, as I said in my note, this video is going to cover limiting reactant concept, which we've actually previously covered in class, and the limiting reactant problems that we didn't cover in class due to uh, my illness last week. I apologize for that. Uh, I hope that you were able to use the textbook, as I mentioned in my note to the class. Uh, but I also wanted to create this video in order to um, help you out in case you were struggling with the concepts. So, as we uh, got into a couple weeks ago, we discussed what a limiting reactant is. We saw that a limiting reactant is the chemical substance that runs out first or gets used up first in a chemical reaction. The opposite of that is the excess reactant. It's the chemical substance that is left over, doesn't get used up in a chemical reaction. And we looked at this example and I posted a previous video of a, a sandwich. If we had two slices of bread and uh, three slices of cheese that would then create one grilled cheese sandwich, if we had this set of ingredients in the kitchen, we could say, well, there are two slices of bread, which would be matched up with three slices of cheese, and two other slices of bread match up with another three slices of cheese, and then no more bread left. We'd have two grilled cheese sandwiches with lots of cheese left over. So the limiting reactant is bread. It runs out first. And the excess reactant is cheese. There's lots left over in this case. We then worked with the Skittles in class in order to help visualize uh, molecules interacting with each other in our uh, candy compounds, if you will, in order to see that as we matched up the uh, correct ratio of uh, candies together, we might have um, not enough of one color, and that would represent the limiting reactant. And even though we might still have many of another uh, color or chemical, if you will, in that reaction that's left over not being used up. So now what we need to do is solve limiting reactant problems. Let's look at one here. Zinc and sulfur react to form zinc sulfide. If 6.00 grams of zinc, 4.00 grams of sulfur are available for the reaction, determine the limiting reactant, and then determine the mass of zinc sulfide produced. So I'll say now before we uh, get into the question, these can at first seem fairly uh, long questions, but they build on the same stoichiometry types of um, thought and, and steps that we were working on earlier in the class. So the uh, first step is going to be, as usually, usual for stoichiometry questions, to write down a balanced chemical equation. Then we'll want to write down what is given, multiply the molar mass in order to go from uh, mass to a number of moles, multiply the mole ratio using coefficients as we have before, and multiply by the molar mass. We're going to go through each of these steps, but I just want to show you that the logic is exactly the same for these limiting reactant problems as we've seen in previous stoichiometry, stoichiometry questions. So it's a mass-mass calculation. We know the mass of zinc. We know the mass of sulfur. We want to um, we want to go from uh, mass of those reactants to the amount of mass that we're going to produce of the zinc sulfide. But we're going to do it twice in this case because we're going to do it once for each reactant. We're going to take the mass of zinc that we're given in the question, 6 grams, and we're going to figure out, well, how much mass of zinc sulfide will we produce in that case? And we're going to do the, re, um, the calculation again for a mass of sulfur, the 4.00 grams, to figure out how much mass of zinc sulfide would we uh, form in that case. So again, same question. We're going to write down the, uh, the equation. We're going to look at it and say, uh, is it balanced, and try to balance it. In this case, the reaction is balanced, and so then we can move on to the next step. So we're going to use zinc to find the mass of zinc sulfide that would be produced or made. So we're starting off with the given as we have all along, 6.0 grams of zinc. We're going to multiply by the molar mass to figure out how many moles of zinc we actually uh, have if we have 6 grams of zinc. We're going to use the mole ratio using the coefficients from our balance equation to relate the moles of zinc sulfide to the moles of zinc. And then we're going to use the molar mass again, this time of zinc sulfide, in order to figure out how many grams would I form of the zinc sulfide from the 6.00 grams of zinc. 
in the end will go to three significant digits because the 6.00 grams of zinc has only three significant digits and it has the least number of significant digits out of all the values that we're using here. And so we end up with that 8.494 grams zinc sulfide. We could then do the same thing for the sulfur. 4.00 grams of sulfur multiplied by the molar mass in the ratio shown here gives us the number of moles of sulfur. We use the mole ratio to convert between uh, the number of moles of sulfur and the number of moles of zinc sulfide. And then we use the molar mass of the zinc sulfide again in order to figure out the uh, number of grams of zinc sulfide we would form from the 4.00 grams of sulfur. Again, we're going to three significant digits because the sulfur had the 4.00, three significant digits in that case, and it's the smallest number of significant digits in our equation here. We end up with an answer of 12.2 grams of zinc sulfide. So we've done, again, similar stoichiometry to what we've done before. We've just done it twice, once for each of the reactants. So now we need to do some uh, sleuthing or some finding of uh, how do we actually figure out which is the limiting reactant. We need to circle the smallest number out of the two values that we got for the zinc sulfide. In that case, the 8.94 grams of zinc sulfide produced by the 6.00 grams of the zinc. Therefore, the limiting reactant is the zinc. It's going to make less of the product than the sulfur would in this case. Therefore, if we had 6.00 grams of zinc and 4.00 grams of sulfur that we were reacting together, the largest amount that we could produce is the 8.94 grams uh, produced because of the limiting reactant of the zinc. So what I'd recommend is that you go ahead and practice this. Here's another question. Again, go through all the steps. Is this equation balanced? And then the steps of a limiting reactant question. I'd recommend, why don't you pause the video now, practice this question on your own, and then uh, start the video up again in order to reveal the answer. Okay, so in a reaction, 50.0 grams of manganese 4 oxide reacts with 25.0 grams of aluminum. Identify the limiting reactant and calculate the mass of manganese metal produced. The equation for the reaction is shown here. So in this case, there's coefficients out front. Of course, we could always double check them, but the equation looks balanced and indeed is already balanced. And so we can go through the question looking at the conversion to go from the 50.0 grams of manganese oxide using the molar mass to convert to the number of moles, the mole ratio to interrelate within the reaction, and then the molar mass of the manganese in order to finally calculate out properly that 31.6 grams of manganese, if we go to three significant digits, will be produced in this case. Again, we've only done manganese uh, for oxide in this case, so we also need to look at the aluminum. So. Here we can show the calculation, 24, 25, excuse me, 0 0.0 grams of aluminum multiplied by the molar mass using the mole ratio multiplied again by the molar mass of uh, manganese. And we end up with an answer of 38.2 grams of manganese to three significant digits. From that alone, we could probably compare uh, in your notes to the, the two values that we produce, but I'll show a slide here that compares them uh, side by side. The manganese 4 oxide will produce 31.6 grams of the manganese, and the aluminum will produce 38.2 grams of the manganese. So, in the end, 31.6 grams of manganese produced by the manganese 4 oxide is the smallest value here. Thus, the manganese 4 oxide is the limiting reactant because we're only going to produce the 31.6 grams of manganese. Therefore, the aluminum will be in excess. 
So in the end, this is the uh, kind of question that you should be able to do based on this video here. We'll review and answer any questions come Monday, but uh, hopefully this video helps you to put this last portion of the stoichiometry together. Again, go to your textbook. It is a, a great help. And the other thing I'll mention is there are practice questions in the practice booklet, and you should practice those prior to coming to Monday's class so you can arrive with any questions that you have about the material.